And I'd also like to again, thank all of you for coming. And I believe we have two governing board members here today too. So thank you for coming. All eight candidates were invited. However, incumbent Jean McGrath declined to participate. Elections are our chance to stand up for what matters the most to us. We, the voters, have an impact on the issues that affect us, our communities, our families, and our future. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Cindy Hams. I'd like to echo Paula's welcome to everyone for the forum. There are seven candidates. Those attending are two at-large candidates running for one seat. Positions are also open in districts three, four, and five. Mr. Arterberry retired in July 2008 after serving a six-year tenure as chancellor for the West Valley Mission Community College District of 22,000 students in Santa Clara County, California. In 2008, Mr. Arterberry formed the firm of Arterberry & Associates, an educational consulting firm providing services in such areas as community college executive searches, strategic planning, organizational review, educational master planning, community college executive coaching, and seminars and training for community college trustees, administrators, staff, and students. In June 2016, Dr. Deborah Blue joined the firm and it was incorporated as Atterbury Blue and Associates, LLC. Mr. Arterbury served as senior search consultant for the highly respected executive search firm of Ralph Anderson and Associates from 2008 to 2016. Mr. Arterbury brings a total of more than 35 years in higher education, serving the last 20 years as a California Community College CEO. Other community college positions held by Mr. Arterbury include Superintendent, President of Solano Community College, 1994 to 02, President of Merritt College, 93 to 94, Superintendent, President for the West Hills Community College District, 88 to 93. He has prior experience serving as the Dean of Student Services and Dean of Community-Based Education, I'm sorry, uh, and Assistant Dean of Student Affairs at Riverside City College. His instructional experience includes Assistant Professor of Sociology, Ethnic Studies, and History at Riverside Community College and Instructor of Sociology at Drivers Christian College in Hawkins, Texas. Mr. Arterbury currently serves as the leadership coach for the National Community College Program Achieve the Dream through the University of Texas. Achieve the Dream programs assist community colleges to focus on student success. Mr. Arterbury has served on numerous community-based organizations. Upon retirement, he was awarded the Harry Budimer Distinguished Administrator Award by the Association of California Community College Administrators. It is the association's oldest and most prestigious award. We will now enter the time when they finally get to speak. And they will each have one minute to introduce themselves. Thank you. Stan Arterberry. First, I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters, and most importantly, we'd like to thank Paradise Valley College for hosting this event. You, you, you learned my bio, but one aspect of my bio that wasn't given to you, I am a former community college student. I am a former community college student. Even before that, I was a high school dropout. Community college was my vehicle to a very successful career that was just given to you. I want, and I'm asking you, to hire me as your next board member representing District 4. And throughout today, I will give you reasons why you should hire me. Now we're going to go to the first question. This is a question that each candidate will answer. They have the question in front of them. It is on your um, <laughs> program also. It is a little involved. Each candidate will have two minutes each to answer the question. Uh, the Higher Learning Commission, the national accreditation body for each of the 10 colleges, has been asked to investigate the management of the colleges and the behavior of the board. An investigation may lead to sanctions putting the colleges at risk of losing accreditation. What behaviors do you consider the most serious alleged in the complaint and how would you act to resolve those four behaviors if elected to the board? Stan Arterbury. 
in responding to this question, I'd like for the audience to focus on the last sentence. What behaviors do you consider most serious of the alleged complaint? They're all serious. There is not one that's more serious than the other. And these complaints are failure to prioritize institutional educational practices and responsibility, violation of freedom of expression as desperate treatment based on religion and political viewpoints, retaliation against refusal to engage in collaboration practice, including whistleblowing, failure to follow established procedures regarding public input and transparency. They're all serious. What the board must recognize, the Learning Commission can't do anything to the Board of Trustees, to the governing board, not I. But what they can do is impact the college's accreditation. And what typically happens is, first, you get a warning. Second, sanctions. Third, a possible special trustee would take over the institution and the trustees become advisory. And then the fourth is loss of accreditation. And the loss of accreditation means that financial aid, grants, students' credits, all of those are lost. So all four of these are important, and the board must collectively address these. They must collectively address each of these violations or complaints. It is my expectation that HLC will send a team. The chancellor is required to provide a response on the 29th of this month. I expect that the LLC, HLC will then send a visiting team to come and talk to board members, the administration and faculty, and then they will then issue a report. This is serious and the board needs to take it as a serious matter. Again, across the nation, higher education institutions are facing challenges to free speech and academic freedom. Do you think there have been board practices in the past that did not support free speech? If yes, please provide examples. Stan Arterbury. I firmly believe that uh, in board policy, that board policies will indicate academic freedom within the classroom and the delivery of educational services to the students. I think that's paramount to the academic world. As a former faculty member, I felt that it was important to have the ability to provide instruction to the students that were in my classroom. To directly answer this question, I too uh, have witnessed on board me at board meetings where it was obvious that there were being questions about uh, lectures, there were questions about uh, tours, there were questions about taking students to, uh, to view the Chicano wall, there were questions at a uh, college forum where a president was being uh, asked questions. And uh, it was uh, stated that no questions about football should be asked. That is a direct attack on freedom of speech. And that behavior should stop now. That behavior should stop now. And the board should be supportive of its faculty and staff in its pursuit of academic freedom. The question is, the system of shared governance that MCCCD has enjoyed for decades is allegedly falling apart. Meet and confer systems for all levels of employees have been eliminated. What steps would you take to restore shared governance in establishing policies affecting teaching faculty and all other employee groups? Mr. Arterberry? You know, I'm a firm believer that shared government Governance has to be a paramount within decision-making within an educational institution, but there's something missing in this conversation, and there's something missing in the conversation at the Maricopa Community College. I hear no one talking about the voice of the students. So when we talk about shared governance, shared governance must incorporate the administration, the faculty, the staff, and students. We must have the voice of the students in this entire process. Shared governance uh, in my professional career was paramount. We didn't do anything within the organization unless the voices of all those constituencies were brought into the picture. So shared governance and the primary focus 
It's something else we're missing here is student success. That has to be the paramount of why we're having shared discussion, focusing on student success. There's also a comment in here about meet and confer. Meet and confer process needs to be clearly defined. I realize that this district has contracts with its administrators. Those contracts tends to define working condition, it tends to define salary, it tends to define evaluation, it tends to define placement. All of those things need to be understood with all of its employee groups. Whether we call that meet and confer, whether we have another term, as my colleague to the left is saying, it need to be modernized. But there must be a way in which employees will engage with the organization. But what's central in this whole discussion of shared governance is that we must have the voice of the students, of the staff, of faculty, and administration and those decisions that are coming forward to the board with the primary focus on student success. Let's not forget student success. Thank you. Our final question of the four questions that will be addressed by each of the candidates. The question is, at the end of the current fiscal year, the budget indicates that there will be an uncommitted fund balance of $94 million and this will decrease to $26 million by 2021, in addition to maintaining a cash reserve of $500 million. Timelines for budget project projections have been reduced from eight years to three years. At what level of funding should fund balance and cash reserves be maintained? If elected to the board, how will you get there? Thank you. Mr. Carterberry. Yes, I, I would like to address this uh, question, answering the final question. If elected to the board, how will you get there? When you look at the administrative procedures and powers and duties of the board of, governing board, it reads, in conjunction with other district boards, the State Board of Education, develop a process to determine program funding priorities for state purposes. Each district board shall submit state aid recommendations to the legislature. We need to get the state to reinvest into the Maricopa Community Colleges that also reinvest into the Pima Community College District. Those are the two districts which do not receive any general funding from the state. We do receive categorical funding from the state, so let's not uh, confused that the state is not funding Maricopa something. When we look at the other part of the question, we're talking about one-time dollars. We're saying by year uh, 20, what is it? By year 21, we will only have 68 million. Those are one-time dollars. And when you take one-time dollars and apply them to ongoing expenses, you're in trouble. Okay, so what is necessary is for this board to uh, collaborate with this chancellor, to develop a political agenda, and to work with Pima and the Board of Education and the state legislature to begin to reinvest into the Maricopa Community Colleges. One, I think it should be between 10 to 15 percent, and the other should be at least 5 percent. You need to have a rainy day fund but you have to be very cautious about using those dollars for ongoing expenses, such as salaries and benefits. So we are now to the section where we have something called grab bag, grab bag questions. You can't say that fast. I cannot. <laughs> you are correct. Mr. Atterbury, it has been widely reported that the major IT systems used by Maricopa County Maricopa Community College districts such as human resources, payroll systems, and the student information systems are dysfunctional. What steps would you take to address these problems and hold management accountable? And what is your timeline? And it's okay if you take a smidge more than a minute on that one. <laughs> I respect that. My timeline is yesterday. Um, employees uh, who work are expected to be paid on a timely manner. Employees who work expect to receive 
their just pay, not more, not less. I think that's essential. That has a significant impact on the morale issue that's impacting the Maricopa Community College districts today. So I think that is so crucial. I think what's most important, however, is that the board needs to allocate the necessary resources that would correct the problem. The board itself cannot correct the problem. They need to allocate the necessary resources so that that system, and they should have in the very beginning, ran a parallel system, the new one and the current one at the same time before going to the new system. That's what should have happened. And that should have come from the administration. But what's most important, employees should be paid on a timely manner. Thank you. The next question is, goes to the <coughs> library. Mary. What role should sports play in community college? Please <laughs> you explain your perspective on canceling the football programs. Do I have 30 minutes? <laughs> 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 Uh, for, first of all, first of all, the board did not cancel football. It was an administrative decision. So let's make that understood. It was an administrative decision. As a new board member representing <coughs> District 4, and I'm asking for your vote, I would ask the chancellor to bring a full report to the new board to fully explain why football was canceled. 30 seconds. I think football was my vehicle to success. Football was my vehicle to success. It kept me in the classroom. It kept me in 15 units. I passed all of those units. I graduated. I would hate to see that opportunity to be lost to students starting fall of 2019. So I would ask for the board to have the administration Finish your sentence. <laughs> I would ask for the board to have the administration to bring to the board a full report of why football was canceled so that the board can engage in that discussion. Oops. Thank you. Every candidate will have two minutes to answer this question, which I believe is also on your program. Mm -hmm. In canvassing neighborhoods for your candidacy, what have the voters expressed to you as their primary concerns and focus for the MCCCD governing board? Thank you. Mr. Carterberry? Uh, you know, I think I, there were three areas that I feel uh, when I was canvassing. One was, what's your political party? <laughs> uh, and I try to explain to the uh, individual that this is a nonpartisan and that um, party affiliation is not known, and they still would ask, however, what is your party? <laughs> I would then be extremely honest and would tell them what my party is. The other one is football. I mean, that probably was one of the hottest topics. And of course, they would ask me, what are you going to do about it? And um, I have to pull, you know, explain to them because a lot of folks in our community think the board made that decision and the board did not make that decision. And I have to explain that to them. I've already told you what I would like to do. I would like to see the topic brought back. If I had an opportunity to vote for football, I would tell this audience here today, I would vote yes, return football. But I need to hear the rationale of why the administration. The third one was morale. Why is morale so poor in the district? And I believe one of the uh, questions was about morale. A lot of times people think, well, let's pay employees more. No. The way you treat an employee has a greater impact on their morale. You can pay them a million dollars, but if you treat them like a dog, they're going to feel like a dog. So the manner in which our employees are treated has the greatest impact on improving employee morale. So those are the three that uh, tended to confront me when I went by my residence during canvassing. Thank you. We are nearing the end of our program. In fact, 
these um, candidates, would you please give them a round of applause? For Not all of the questions were asked. This could have easily been a four-hour forum. They got us not. Um, however, if you have further questions, uh, every candidate has a website. They have also graciously agreed to remain until 3.30. Um, so that if you have a question that was not addressed, uh, please talk to them. Thank you to you, the audience, for your courtesy and your attention. It is absolutely required in forums like this that we have the cooperation not only of candidates but also of the audience. So thank you so much. Yeah, very good job. Thank you to the league members who are responsible for providing this forum. Uh, we are identified by buttons. There are many more league members in the audience. Uh, for two, almost 100 years, we have been um, working to support voting in general and educating voters specifically on any range in pick a decade. So um, please feel free to thank personally Paula, Penny, everybody. <laughs> Please remember that your vote is your voice. Election day is Tuesday, November 6th. It ends promptly at 7 p.m.